Welcome to Allies Are Enemies. I'm Jess. And I am Sean. And today we are talking about Aircon because we just got back from Harrogate where we spent four days doing the UK's second largest board game convention. Yeah, Aircon is primarily focused on playing games. So there's lots of tables. There are tons of games to borrow from the library to play. And really the main goal is to, to meet up and play tons of games. There is also some buying. There is an exhibition hall. There's a really big bring and buy area. And in the exhibition hall as well, they're running some demos of newer games. So we're going to be talking about demos that we played. We're going to be talking about older games we got out of the library. We're going to be talking about the few games that we bought, not nearly as much as last year. Uh, but first of all, we wanted to talk about the event itself and the hosts watch it played. The whole team from Watch It Played come out and they run these events. And last year we attended them, we loved them. So all of the events are typically like easy to explain party games, which we don't get a lot of an opportunity to play. Yeah, because we're two people and two people does not a party make <laughs> cool sometimes, but two people it does not a party game make, that is for sure. Uh, and so it's nice to be able to play these games like Green Team Wins, we played um, Strike, which is a favorite. Strike is such an underrated game. We did just as badly in the tournament this year as we did last year. Uh, what, what were the other ones? We also played Wheels versus Doors, uh, where you just choose one over the other. And then there was uh, just one. And that one was great because we started in seven people groups mm -hmm. and then merged to be 14 and then got bigger and bigger until the final one was just 100. I think we managed 100 people playing just one. Yeah, I don't know. That might that might be a record. It was it was very cool. It was very fun. It was crazy because there were still like a weird amount of of separate clues. It was the the hint ended up being Italy, Italy. and there was stuff like pasta and pizza that only one person had. That a hundred people had that many different words. But the whole thing was so fun. And watch it play just. They, they just do a really good job. They're very classy. They're very generous with their time. And this was the second year that we've been to Aircon. So it was, it was fun to see people that we saw last year. Again, that was terrific. And we just know more people in the board gaming community now. So that was great. And we had a couple of people recognize us from the channel. And you don't know how big of a thrill that was for us. I know we've begged you to come and say hi to us. But still, it was it was exciting that people actually knew us. It was the first time we'd been recognized. So it was nice to know that there are real people watching and it's not just bots. So that was really lovely. Thank you. Although we did totally make it like that thing, like when you wave at someone and it's a red light and then you're just kind of stuck in, in the same place and then you make it so awkward for, for them. I feel like we did that to you. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get better at that, I think. So please keep saying hi to us. Don't, don't let our weirdness deter you. Well, and I do feel like that is a little bit of the vibe of Aircon because I like going to yeah. these events because then you can start recognizing people. And so even if you don't know their names, there's just that friendly little nod as you pass by. And by the end of the weekend, there were tons of folks that we met in, in one situation or another, which is lovely. And there are people from last year that we saw again this year that we're really happy to see too. Uh, but let's let's talk a little bit about the games as well. So we're going to start off with the demos. We played four demos that we're really excited about. And the first of those was in the footsteps of Darwin. And I hadn't really heard anything about this game. So I was surprised to see because there's a few Darwin games that seem to come out this year. And this is a great tile placement game. You're only placing 12 tiles on your player board, but you're selecting the type of animal and the continent that it's from to try and complete certain columns, rows, and, and various goals. And because it's only 12, it plays pretty quickly, but there is some interesting decisions to make. Yeah, there's kind of this rondelle system of how you're choosing the tiles because they're in this little nine, nine tile grid, 12 yeah, tile I grid, think nine, nine tile, tile grid. Yeah. And whatever you choose, if it's like two away, then you move two. So you're choosing one that's good for you and you're also trying to kind of set up your opponent to fail. Although I feel like we didn't do that as well as the people we were playing with. We were playing with... Um, one of the people has a YouTube and, channel. And Instagram. Kate and plays ins great games. Kate, Kate, play, Kate plays games. And it's great. You should check that out for sure. And yeah, and she she whooped us. She was very, very good at it. But that was a really cool one. 
And then also a Galileo Project. Yes, and we were interested in Galileo Project before Ericon because we really like Ganymede and it's by the same company. And it has a very similar look. And we kind of thought it was more like a more complex version of Ganymede because it's a little bit heavier. But it's actually a different designer, which is interesting. Yeah, I would have I would have sworn that it was going to be the same designer. And it really goes to show how important the development team is because it was the same development team. It really does feel like like that just that next level of Ganymede. And Ganymede's a game that we love. So we did really like this. And I'm I'm like obsessed with the moons of Jupiter as well. Uh so it was great, but I think the thing with both of them is we're just we're just waiting to find them for just a little bit cheaper than we saw them at the convention if we can because we liked them but we're also very cheap. Then another one we played was King of Monster Island and so we really like King of New York and King of Tokyo that we played before but we thought this would be fairly similar and I was surprised at how different it felt. It's a cooperative game first of all but they added in a lot to that and one of the funnest things is just putting the dice in and having them like spread out it's just it's it's really fun yeah there's like this this big um kind of volcano volcano in the middle and you put the monster dice so it's a co-op game and you're fighting against a a monster we we beat the hardest monster although we beat the hardest monster on the easiest level it was still the hardest so we beat like the third out of six kind of but yeah i thought i thought it was going to be exactly the same because it's still the same you know you roll the dice three times kind of that yahtzee dice selection thing but it was surprisingly different. I really thought King of Tokyo, because it's a game that I played a lot early in my board gaming, that I'd kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say grown out of it, because it's still a great game, but have kind of, um, I've just, I've played it out a little bit. But this really rejuvenated the idea of the, like, King of series. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by it. And then the last demo we played was Star Wars deck building game. And Sean's a very big Star Wars fan, so we were quite keen to check it out. Uh, it, it definitely has a lot of Star Realm vibes because you are doing uh, deck building and you have these bases. And you also have ships that can like suck up damage that you can put out as well. And when you say that it has a Star Realms vibe, it is more than just a vibe. This is highly inspired by Star Realms, but it is mixed with kind of a couple other things. You can feel a little bit of DC, a deck building game in there. You can feel a little bit of kind of Radlands in there with the bases and the bases have different powers, but it's got this cool thing, I think, that differentiates it, where the cards in the card row are either Rebel, Empire, or Neutral. Neutral. So if you're Rebel, you can only take the Rebel cards or the Neutral cards, but you can attack the Empire cards, and it gives you a bonus, and it means they can't get those cards. And that's a really cool thing that I haven't seen in a deck building game before. So that part was interesting, and that it's Star Wars. I just... I love Star Wars, but I always lose at those sorts of games because I get the people that I like more than I get the people that are important. If I see Wedge, I don't care if I'm going to lose. I'm taking Wedge. That's what I liked about playing is I (laughs) whooped Sean because I got all of these uh, defense systems out, meaning he couldn't just never hit me. And then he just kept grabbing the people because he wanted those characters. But I am a Star Wars nut, so it's probably something I'm going to keep looking at. But we got Star Realms right now, so it's not like top of the list. We also played a bunch of games out of the library, and the first one we played, I was really excited to see in there, and that's Ginkopolis. So we've had this on our to play list for a bit because it's a tile placement city building game, so we both like those mechanics. I, I was a bit worried though, because one of the other important parts of it is it said area control, and, and sometimes I can find those a, a bit too mean. But, but this way, I found it more strategic than, than mean. What you're trying to do is you're building up these towers of buildings, and at the same time, you're adding your your color tokens things to them to try and get the largest groups of those buildings and to fill these different goals. And all this stuff's coming out at, at, at the same time. Um, so you really can mess with people when you're messing with those groups, but it didn't feel too bad but it's it's one that's been on our radar for quite a while and i'm really glad we got a chance to play it yeah i i I really liked it and then another one we played is quirkle and this is one we've seen a lot of but have never played and it looks really simple because you're just trying to line up the different colors and the different shapes 
but it ends up being really tough sometimes to figure out what to put out because anything you put out, you're opening up opportunities for your opponent to put things out as well. Yeah, it's kind of like Domino's Extreme kind of thing where you've got five different shapes or six different shapes, six different colors, and you're trying to put them in a line, which we all know obviously is called a corkle. Yes. I love games that like trick you into just thinking a word is a word you've always used where we're just immediately like, oh, I can't let you make a corkle as though that were a thing. But I guess it is now. Um, and it, it was cool. And I was interested in it mostly because we just did the alphabet challenge and I realized how few games I play that start with Qs or Xs. So I was excited to have another Q game that I know now. And then another game we played, this one wasn't from the library, but was from uh, somebody that Sean knows, but Sean couldn't play, and he wasn't that keen on I, playing it's, it. It's less that I couldn't play, and more that I am not a fan of social deduction games, and this is Blood on the Watchtower. Clock Blood, Tower. Blood on the Clock Tower. Blood on the, right, Blood on the Watchtower is the Bob Dylan version. Blood <laughs> on the Clock Tower is... Uh, Everyone's heard of it. This is like werewolf extreme kind of thing. I just said Domino's extreme. Now we played a lot of uh, extreme board games. Extreme board games. Um, but I know you played it and you were very excited. Yes, and I do like werewolf and social social deduction games. But it's so interesting because everyone has a very specific role as opposed to just being a generic role. And we all loved it. I think most of us had never played before, and we all got super into it. And then when the game finished, there was tons of talking afterwards about discussing every situation and why did you say that? And oh, when this happened, I thought it was because of this. And then right away, we played a second time as well. And it was just like this amazing shared experience that for the rest of the weekend, anytime I ran into any of those folks as part of the game, it was like we were friends because we had this, this shared yelling at each other figuring out who's evil and everything kind of opportunity yeah i'm actually interested to play because I've, I've never liked werewolf or generally social deduction games because i don't like all the yelling and all the you did it no i didn't do it stuff but when i when i met up with everybody after they were done the game i was off at the play test center which by the way was great i got to test some of my own games test other people's games it's just such a great little group that is there but when I went and met up with them again, it was it was like that thing after you've played paintball when everyone's really talking about these like adventure stories and the amazing things that happened to them and like reliving the things. And it was exciting for me and I wasn't even there watching it. So that says a lot about that game. And then another one, um, one, one that I don't think we figured out, but was Turing Machine. And Turing Machine was definitely on our list of two plays. And uh, what it is, is it's kind of a computer in like the simplest sense. Like, like the I'm... old computer punch cards. Yeah. So you just got cards and they line up in a certain way and you're trying to figure out the three digit combination, what the code is, through this like logic puzzle. And I think if we had someone there who'd played it before, who could kind of help us with it a little bit, we would have got it also. Is a little bit weird because it felt a bit like playing a two-person Sudoku puzzle. And I feel like this would shine as a one-person game. I think it definitely would shine as a one-person game because I was kind of trying to figure some other aspect out while you were figuring something else out. So sometimes we were testing something that I didn't really understand why we were testing it because I hadn't quite got up or I was on a different page. So I, I get why it would work. And it's not one I would want to play competitively. I would want to play cooperatively. But I think you're right. I think it would be best at, at one. Another game we played is Yokai Septet. And this came from Naveen from Watch It Play. There was this little meet and greet. And so we went up to him. We'd never met him before and asked if he'd want to join us for a couple games. And he was he was lovely. He played a, a game of parade with us and then taught us this one. And it's a trick taking game where your goal is to get three sevens um, without winning seven tricks. So it's trying to balance winning the tricks with the sevens, but not too many other ones. It was great, like a really cool art. It took me a couple turns to get, and I think the first turn I did just a really, really dumb play. And, uh, and Naveen was like, oh, like what is his strategy? And I was like, ah, I fooled you. My strategy is not understanding how this works. Um, but Jess won it handily. Uh, with, with, I guess, my unwitting help. 
but really cool and it's definitely a game i would i would look up again and it was cool how much the watch it played people were doing just playing games with everybody and really generous with their time which which was terrific uh, another one cubitos and cubitos was one on our list of want to play games if we found it we we're glad to find it i will say though so what it is it's a dice rolling racing game so you're racing around a map you got little square guys and little square dice and all the dice do different things but we played with the simplest dice and we played with two players and i feel like this game would be better with the more complex dice and definitely with more players yeah i i think so it is interesting because you start off with really simple dice and then you have to uh, try and roll things to upgrade your dice bit by bit so by the end you have hopefully lots of strong dice that you're using and and i think the dice powers will make a big difference and will affect the replayability as well with two players it was just we just felt like we were going through the motions a little bit more. It wasn't kind of that excitement of one person pulling ahead and then the next. And uh, but I am keen to play it again and to play it, play it with more. Yeah, yeah, I think I think for sure it's it's hard to have a really solid two player race game. Odin's Ravens, uh, Cliff of Eldorado. There are a couple, but it's hard. Uh, another one is Coloma, and I was excited. Coloma's not one that was on our list, but I was excited to see it because I'm generally a big fan of Johnny Pack's designs and part of the reason is that I like cowboy stuff and he likes cowboy stuff and he uses that theme a lot he's one of the very few and this is a cowboy game it's a cowboy action selection game where you've got all these different kind of chunks to the map um I'm not explaining it very well. Yeah, but so it's there, really there are the, for the action selection. It does relate to the different parts of the board and lets you uh, build out cards or fight outlaws or build bridges. And so at, at the same time, everybody has to select which action they're going to. But the trick is the most popular action. The the second part of it gets blocked off, so it's not mm -hmm. as good anymore. So you want to do something good, but you don't want to do the same thing that the other people are doing. The trick is at two players. There is a bot, and the bot works fine mm -hmm. um, because it does give you some interesting decisions because you know two spaces they're not going to be. But I think this game, again, is one that probably works really well at three three and four players. Yeah, I, th I think it would shine. I would like to try it again with more players. And then the last one, and this one was exciting because the, the day we got there on Thursday, I saw this when they were putting out the games on the shelf first because we got there first thing we tried to get up there actually they said it was going to snow and we're horrible canadians who just make fun of them oh this isn't snow but we got there before the snow and they were putting out the games on the shelf and it was 10 penny parks in which i've been very excited to play 10 penny parks but they couldn't get it into the computer and every day i went back and the guy was like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm really trying to get it in the computer and he recognized me by the last day, and they got it in the computer on Sunday. We were the first people to get it out of the library, and it was pretty good. We tend to like theme park games, and this is a worker placement game that has a amazing board. It has a carousel in the center that you can turn, and that sets the price for the different rides as well. And so you are putting your workers out to gain sponsorship or to clear off some of the trees on your board to make them big enough on your spaces to be able to put down the various attractions that you buy along the way and also the the boards to expand it so over time it slowly gets bigger and bigger with all kinds of different types of attractions yeah it's a, it's like a fairly simple worker placement tile placement game but it's still it's interesting because i think it's tight enough like it's hard to have enough money it's hard to move up all of these different tracks and it's really satisfying when you get the rides because the rides look really cool and the cards that come with them the like little advertising cards look really cool. So I think the look of it and the theme goes a long way, but this was one of my favorite games that we got out of the library. I think also the anticipation. <laughs> we had three days to look forward to playing yeah. it and that excitement on that final day. <laughs> Every time we went to the library, I went straight for the tease. Uh, so to finally get it, the anticipation had built up so much that I wasn't gonna like it, but I did, it, it, was, it was a good game. And there were a few games that we did purchase and we were happy that we didn't purchase a ton of games, but one of them that we got was Dorf Romantique. It might be romantic, but it's Romantique more sounds fun much to say better. Romantique. Yeah, yeah. And we had recently done a video of top 10 campaign games and someone had put this in the comments. So to the person who did that, 
thank you very mm-hmm. much because we hadn't heard of it before and it was probably the the bell of the ball it seemed like on friday every stall had a stack of them and then they were gone by end of day saturday yeah this was everywhere and it's one i hadn't seen in the uk yet and i feel like it just came in and it was a hundred percent it was the game everyone was walking around with it was we saw it and we were like, oh, we'll come back later. We don't want to carry it. And then we walked by like 10 different people carrying it. We're like, let's get one now so we don't miss out. And I'm glad that we did because um, we actually, we got home. We played it like right away and we we're like, let's play one game. Uh, and we just kept playing it because it's really fun. It's just a city building game where you're building out your city whilst also trying to complete these goals, which are basically just like have an area this big that includes the goal thing. And as you beat goals, you get more goals. And the interesting thing is it's cooperative. Mm-hmm. So you are building the city and making these decisions together. And I could see that working really well for solo, but it also works really well for how we play cooperatively. I don't know if I'd be too keen to play it like six player cooperatively. Yeah, that would be a bit much. And it's got a campaign as well. So as you do it each time, however well you do, you get to check off so many boxes on this campaign track. And then you get to open different stuff from boxes, which we love doing. And you're just adding kind of little bits here and there. But all of it is fun. It's just one of those games that you just kind of want to play over and over and over it feels a bit like if Carcassonne was cooperative a little bit yes yeah I would agree and I'm really excited to keep playing it another one that we picked up was all all Sean I'll let you talk about it (laughs) yes so that is final girl and this I think finished off all of the stuff from season one uh when I first got one of the boxes from season one I was like I knew that I would have a problem with this game because it's so collectible and it's about horror movies, which I love. But I was like, Jess, don't worry. I'm only going to get one box. No, you promised me two. There were, two. You said there were these two there boxes that you were going to get, and that was it. There's a Nightmare on Elm Street one and a Friday the 13th. And I was like, the other ones aren't even movies that I really know, so don't worry about it. And then I loved it. And so, sure enough, I have ended up with all five from season one. And there is an off chance that I have two of the ones from season two already ordered because Aliens and The Thing. And it took all my strength not to order the one that's like Stranger slash Purge slash Straw Dogs. Uh, It's not it's not going to last, but really excited about that. Final Girl has been I've just I've gotten nuts for that game. I really like it. The theme is so good and like the gameplay is very random but it's so immersive it's great and you have made me play that solo but i've actually enjoyed playing it with you as well and then we've played a couple like that so i have played a couple of them but an- another one we picked up wasn't i wasn't really on our radar but i had heard of it and that's origins first builder and that's from board and dice so it's typical board and dice it is a dice placement game and it's a, a civilization game that's a little bit abstracted doesn't necessarily feel too much like it but you are building buildings and increasing military and we've had one play of it so far and I yeah I like it so far I'm interested to to try it more yeah it's one that we picked up from the bring in buy we didn't buy much from there we bought a couple games from there um, but it was a really good price and it was still sealed I love I love me a deal and even when I opened it I was like whoo we got a lot of good stuff in this box for that money just a lot of bits just give me a lot of bits and I'm happy. And it's got a lot of bits. So uh, we'll see how, how we feel about it after a few more plays. And the other one we picked up from the Bring and Buy was Unlock. And we, we love the Unlock games. And this is one of the early ones that we hadn't played yet. And it's got um, Wizard of Oz and a Western one that I've heard very mixed things about. It is is very Marmite. People love it or hate it. But I generally like cowboy stuff, as we established, so I'm, I'm interested in it. It's one of the few boxes that we haven't played through yet, mm-hmm. excluding the very, very new ones. And so we're always happy to pick those up and bring them by because they you can play it and then resell it again. I feel like you're just renting an unlock game. You're, no, one, no one owns an unlock <laughs> game. You just have it and then you, you give it back out into the world. Uh, but that, that, was our, that was our air con. It was, I thought it was even better this year than last year because now we know more people, which is terrific. It was bigger this year and the library was fuller this year and 
it's just if if you haven't been to aircon if you live in the uk it's a no-brainer just go to it next year even if you're close if you're if you're just across in france or the netherlands or belgium hop over here because it's it's well worth it and i was surprised because like you said we were there since the thursday so even longer than the year before and we still didn't do everything that we wanted to do Mm -hmm. because we keep meaning to uh just play with strangers so they have this great system where this time you could get like a lightsaber and light it up if you want a couple people to join you but it felt like we kept moving from event to game to thing that we didn't didn't do that. And we really wanted to. Yeah, we only had a couple opportunities to play to play with friends that from from other places. Um, some of those were play tests. Some of those were games that we brought. We brought Rhino Hero because if we're at a convention, we're gonna have Rhino Hero. If you see us uh, and you want to play Rhino Hero, we'll play Rhino Hero. <laughs> yeah. It's all it's it's the absolute best end of the night game, but it would be nice I think next time or maybe even at UKG to find more opportunities to just play with more folks too. But those were all the games that we played at Aircon. So thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time for another game. Yeah.